Hello everyone, I'm Jeeth with Method. Today I'm talking about the most important new system in the upcoming patch 8.3, particularly for raiders. Horrific Visions. This is a crucial topic, because if you don't know how these new horrific visions work, you are very likely to mess up your first couple runs while you learn. You'll miss out on scarce, time-gated power increases that will be vital to your performance in patch 8.3 and the new raid. First, a little background. Patch 8.3 introduces a new legendary cloak, the Shroud of Resolve. This cloak, much like your Heart of Azeroth necklace, increases in power and item level based on how much work you put into it. It's going to end up higher item level than any other gear you can obtain, including from the hardest bosses of the new raid. It will also provide corruption resistance, allowing you to wear more corrupted gear with more powerful effects. Finally, it will dramatically improve your performance when fighting the Zoth by protecting you from sanity loss during both of the Zoth encounters in the new raid. The cloak begins at 470 item level with 5 corruption resistance and a 5% reduction in sanity loss. It scales all the way up to 498 item level with 50 corruption resistance and 75% reduction in sanity loss. By the time the Nihilotha raid releases, if you didn't miss any upgrade opportunities by messing up a horrific vision, your cloak could be leveled to at least rank 6 with 480 item level, 20 corruption resistance, and 25% sanity loss reduction. But the only way to upgrade your cloak is through the new horrific vision scenario is coming in patch 8.3. And if you don't know what you're doing, it is extremely easy to mess up your first couple runs and lose out on a couple upgrades, putting you significantly behind. So in the rest of this video, I'm going to tell you all about these horrific visions and how to ensure you don't accidentally miss out on a couple upgrades. First, I'm going to go over the questline to get your legendary cloak and unlock the assaults and horrific visions. Then I'll tell you how to farm the currency you need to get into the horrific visions and get your cloak upgrades. Finally, I'll go over the horrific visions, their objectives, mechanics, pitfalls, and how to get the most out of them. Let's get started. When you log on after 8.3 launches, you'll get a quest to talk to a faction leader, who will send you to Magni in the Chamber of the Heart. Magni is going to send you on a long questline. In this questline, you're going to visit a lot of old content that's being repurposed from Azoth's incursions into Azeroth in patch 8.3. You'll meet the two new factions in Aldoom and the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. You'll be introduced to the new Assaults features of 8.3. And you'll revisit old dungeons, redone as solo scenarios that you have to complete to obtain your cloak and unlock horrific visions. I keep saying long questline, and I mean it. All told, the questline from login to my first horrific vision was about three and a half hours of questing, although that's longer than most of you will take due to me testing various things as I worked through it. And in a bit of bad news, as of right now, there is no skip mechanic for alts on the PTR at all. So for you unfortunate souls who are still trying to play alts in BFA, despite Blizzard clearly disapproving of that reprehensible practice, you'll have the dubious privilege of repeating the hours-long questline and innumerable scenarios on every single character you want to play in 8.3. First, Magni's going to send you to the Halls of Origination. This was originally a five-man dungeon in Cataclysm, here, you're going to be tasked with reactivating the Forge of Origination in a solo scenario. You'll face some monsters, and some puzzles, including one that is particularly vague. Don't worry, if you fail to complete this puzzle in a couple minutes, the game will take pity on you, and usher you along to the next step, quietly ignoring your ineptitude. After completing the Halls of Origination, you're sent to Aldoom to establish the Aldoom Accord, one of the two new factions in Patch 8.3. There, you'll complete your very first Black Empire Assault and drive back the forces into Zoth. I'm going to talk more about these later, but briefly, you have to fill a blue bar by killing stuff and clicking on things. And when you're done, you have to kill a big bad monster to finish your assault and obtain your reward. Then you go back to the Heart Chamber to talk to Magni some more. He's going to send you to Pandaria to unlock the second assault location in the Veil of Eternal Blossoms and the second 8.3 faction, the Rajani. Once you've been introduced to the second Black Empire Assault in the Veil vale of Eternal Blossoms and unlock the Rajani, you'll be sent to Mogushan Palace, originally a Mists of Pandaria five-man dungeon. There you'll complete a solo scenario to activate the engine of Nalak Shah. Just as in the Halls of Origination, you'll fight various monsters and complete various puzzles, but it's all quite straightforward. Most of the traps are relatively harmless, and you can bulldoze your way through the scenario. Every now and then while you're chugging along through this questline, 
Nazoth will go all Eye of Sauron on you and creepily stare at you with a bunch of crazy eyes. After you finish up in the recycled Pandaland content, you'll be sent back to Magni again, and he'll send you to the Halls of Origination again. So you'll fly out there, need I say again, and learn that you can't survive in Azoth's world without going insane, unless, perhaps, someone can think of a way to make you resistant to sanity loss. Turns out that everyone's favorite little baby dragon has an idea. Raytheon sends you to Blackwing Descent, originally a Cataclysm raid, to kill some stuff and click a few things. Worth noting here is that you'll probably loot some experimental vials, which are a nice DPS potion that you can only use while in this scenario. Once you've sorted out the Blackwing Descent, Raytheon will give you the Shroud of Resolve, which turns out is literally a piece of one of his relatives. Tastefully attired in dragon carcass, you head back out to... Oh yeah, you guessed it, Halls of Origination. There you'll run through the place again dealing with Nazoth's corruption. It's only fair that I warn you this scenario is extremely difficult. A well-known, wildly talented method raider, who shall remain nameless and blameless here, was killed twice before overcoming the most challenging portion of the scenario. Watch carefully to ensure that you are properly prepared. After conquering the elevator boss in Halls of Origination, Magni will send you to explore your first vision of Azoth. This is not the horrific vision. This is a miniature version that you can complete daily for some currency. We'll come back to these later. Once you're done, you get sent to explore your very first horrific vision. Now, for the most important piece of advice I can give you in the entire video. If you've been tuning me out until now, listen for just this minute. Just go kill the disciple of Nazoth. You have to kill Illyria in Stormwind Vision, or Thrall in the Orgrimmar Vision. Just go there and kill it. Don't futz around, don't explore, just kill the Disciple. Your first time in a horrific vision, you have no means of sustaining your sanity and you will run out of time in just a couple of minutes. If you explore, you'll find yourself running out of sanity before you know it and you'll fail to kill the Disciple. If you kill the Disciple, you'll get a cloak upgrade. If you don't kill it, you won't. You'll miss out on the cloak upgrade and you'll be permanently behind. Almost every person I've talked to who has tested on PTR messed this up and failed to get a cloak upgrade in their first vision because of natural curiosity and running around checking out the new content. Don't do it. You will regret it. Once you're out of your first exploratory horrific vision, it's time for your last few quests. Nazoth is going to attack the Chamber of the Heart. You know the drill by now. Kill some stuff, click some things. Finishing this will unlock your archival research database. This is a research station very similar to the research you've done in the past, for example, at the beginning of BFA on your boat, or in Legion in your order hall. But this research tree is focused on horrific visions. I'm going to talk more about this research table later, but for now you'll pick up the first point, which will quadruple the amount of time you can spend in horrific visions and enable you to get a lot more done. That's it folks, you've unlocked horrific visions. Now that this brief introductory part of the video is over, we'll really test how long you can stand hearing me talk as we move into the main portion of the video. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how you get into the horrific visions. You can't enter a horrific vision until you have a key. And if you're going to do the horrific vision in a group, your group can't enter unless every member has a key. The horrific vision key is called a vessel of horrific visions, so it should be obvious why I'm just calling it a key. You can buy it from Raytheon in the Chamber of the Heart for 10,000 Coalescing Visions. Coalescing Visions are only used to buy keys, nothing else, and there are only a few sources of them available. I'm going to go through the sources of Coalescing Visions from least grindy to most grindy. First, every week, on the normal weekly lockout that resets on Tuesday in North America and Wednesday in Europe, there's an Azoth Assault in either Uldum or the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. You can see where it is by opening your map and clicking on the Nazoth eyeball right below your emissary quest list. Completing this weekly assault will give you 10,000 coalescing visions, an easy, non-grindy source of one key per week. Second, whichever zone Nazoth isn't assaulting will have two assaults per week, one on reset day and one three days later. You can complete these assaults once apiece. Each completion will reward 5,500 Coalescing Visions, so if you do both of these, you'll have 11,000 Coalescing Visions, which gives you a second key just for logging on twice a week, plus a thousand to spare. 
Logging in just twice a week for these assaults will give you two keys per week. If you don't mind doing dailies, it's also quite easy to get a third key. The most fruitful daily is in the Nazoth Assault Zone, called a Vision of Nazoth. Your first completion of the week will give you 2,000 coalescing visions. Subsequent completions will give you 1,000 coalescing visions per daily completion. Additional dailies are available in Uldum and the Vale, where the new factions will reward your efforts with around 50 coalescing visions per daily. These don't give nearly as much as the assaults do, but they can help fill out your third key per week without too much effort. Finally, if you're truly masochistic, there are rares and boxes in both Old Doom and the Veil that when killed or opened drop a few coalescing visions each, usually just a couple, typically not more than 5 to 10. Doing this enough to get a fourth key in a week would require a lot of grinding that may take time away from other activities that would be more rewarding, but if you enjoy grinding, you can go for it for an extra cloak upgrade every week. All told, this really isn't very grindy, particularly compared to the last patch, which is a nice change. Last patch we had to deal with grinding benthic gear, pearls, new essences, and AP. This patch, while AP will still be there, the two new reputations in the Horrific Visions grind won't be particularly burdensome. Alright everyone, we're finally there. Let's talk about the Horrific Visions themselves. Goals, obstacles, pitfalls, and rewards. I'm actually going to talk about the rewards first, because that's important to explain why my advice is to not take any risks in these Horrific Visions. There are two rewards from Horrific Visions. Your Cloak Upgrade, and a currency called Corrupted Mementos. That's it. It's very easy to get your Cloak Upgrade unless you are too greedy chasing more Corrupted Mementos and run out of time. Getting your Cloak Upgrade from each Horrific Vision is vastly more important than trying to get more Corrupted Mementos. Failing to get a Cloak Upgrade in a Horrific Vision puts you permanently behind due to the time gates on acquiring additional keys. Being behind will cost you item level and corruption resistance, both of which will impact your performance in 8.3, as well as sanity loss reduction, which will impact your performance against Nazoth and Nihalatha. Corrupted Mementos, on the other hand, are a new currency with three uses. First, you use Corrupted Mementos at your research table to upgrade your abilities in Horrific Visions. The cost increases the more points you have in the research, beginning at a cost of 100 Corrupted Mementos for your first point, and increasing to thousands as you research more. Second, for 25,000 mementos, you can buy a gem socket for one of your pieces of gear. Obviously, being able to buy a gem socket for your endless succession of unsocketed rings from your weekly Mythic Plus box will help alleviate some of the heartbreak over loot RNG in this game. But 25,000 is a lot of mementos. You're going to start off getting at most 1 or 200 per Horrific Visions run, and with additional research upgrades and practice, you'll eventually be able to get around 1,000 mementos per run. Perhaps more later. Needless to say though, when you're doing 3 Horrific Visions per week, it'll be at least a couple months before you can afford a gem socket. Finally, you can spend vast quantities on a couple of cosmetic items, such as 100,000 for a new mount, or 5,000 for a transmog that makes your cloak look like a backpack. Now while the mount looks really really good, these are pretty obviously end of expansion vanity items when you're rocking gems in every single slot of gear. I can't overstate the importance, in my opinion, of simply ensuring that you get your cloak upgrade from each horrific vision, and being extremely cautious about risking your ability to achieve that goal for the sake of picking up more corrupted mementos. If you fail to get a few corrupted mementos, you lose out on 1 or 2% of the cost of a potential gem socket you'll buy in the future. But if you get greedy chasing them, you might lose out on an entire cloak upgrade and be permanently behind in 8.3 progression. I want to talk briefly about how to prep for your horrific visions. Obviously, you can use food and flasks, and you can use augment runes if you want. If you don't have access to bloodlust, bring some drums so you can get the lust buff. There are new food recipes in 8.3 that only work in visions, and they may be better than regular staff food. For example, one recipe reduces your aggro radius, another reduces crowd control duration, or another can increase your movement speed. I recommend you check out these recipes when they go live and see if you like them better than your regular food. I strongly suggest that you pick up a comfortable rider's barding for your mount equipment slot. A really strong strategy for speed clearing visions involves pulling the entire zone and AOEing it down. This can go horribly wrong if you get dazed off your mount at the wrong moment while trying to group up all the mobs. It's also worth mentioning a couple things about your essences and your talent builds. 
Like I said, a lot of your pulls in these visions will be large AoE pulls, so specking and choosing essences for AoE is smart. Blood of the Enemy and Essence of the Focusing Iris are really good choices for your major essence. Additionally, almost everything you find in the visions is an aberration, which makes Purification Protocol a great choice as either a major or a minor essence. Now, you have the option of doing your horrific visions either solo or in a group of up to five. Obviously in a group, every person needs to have a key to enter. It's possible to do full clears whether you're solo or in a group, but doing your visions in a group offers a couple of advantages. First, while the enemies scale up in health with additional group members, your damage will usually scale better with more friends than the enemy health. Grouping also offers the ability to recover from mistakes, as a friend can restore your sanity if you mess up and either die or deplete your sanity. You can also complete the click things type tasks faster. For example, you can pull an entire zone, mow it down with AoE, and then split up, and every person clicks one or two bombs instead of one person having to click all eight. That's obviously faster. And finally, through the research table, a group will end up with more total sanity per person than a solo player can have. That brings us to the research table. Your first point is the orbs. That'll give you access to three charges of an orb that will replenish all of your sanity. Now, my biggest point this entire video has been that you should just go kill Ilaria or Thrall and get your cloak upgrade. And while that is the biggest trap people testing on PT are messing up once and lose out on a cloak upgrade, the second biggest trap is this. You cannot use your orb in combat. You need to ensure that you go into each pull with enough sanity to get through it, because if you're about to run out of sanity and you're stuck in combat, you may die and deplete your key despite having access to sanity replenishing orbs. I know several people who've assumed that they can use it in combat, they start a pull, run out of sanity, and deplete their vision without achieving their objective and therefore lose out on a cloak upgrade. Don't do that. If you're doing your vision in a group, you also need to know that these charges are shared between the group. Your entire group gets three charges total, not three per person. So you want to make sure you're always close enough together to share the sanity replenishment of each orb. After the orb, in the second tier of research you choose between left side upgrades, focused on solo players, and right side upgrades focused on group players. Going left gives you a 15% DPS increase and damage taken reduction, but this bonus is reduced by having group members with you. It will also give you access to a cheat death, which will refund your health and 500 sanity one time per vision. Going right gives every party member an additional 300 sanity, which is 1500 additional sanity for a group of five. And it makes your first revival, which would normally cost you sanity to cast, cost zero sanity. Obviously that's a huge boon for groups and completely useless for solo players. Additional research gives you sanity restoration from killing elites, DPS boosts and damage taken reductions, movement speed, and the ability to loot chests that contain more corrupted mementos. Now, you queue for a vision by buying your key and clicking on the gateway in the heart chamber. When you enter the scenario, you're in an antechamber with Raytheon. You won't enter the actual vision until you ask Raytheon to port you in, so you have some time to prepare here. The first thing you should do is look at the map. There are two rotating visions, one in Orgrimmar and one in Stormwind. As you see from the maps, each vision has five zones. The first zone, where you spawn in, is where the Disciple of Nazoth resides. It's an easy zone, with the lowest amount of sanity drain per second. The only objective of this zone is to kill the Disciple of Nazoth. In Orgrimmar, that's Thrall. In Stormwind, it's Hilaria. It's very easy to defeat them, particularly if you don't take many risks clearing other areas first for corrupted mementos. Both Alaria and Thrall do have some mechanics to pay attention to. For example, line of sighting a dangerous cast, breaking a shield to interrupt a cast, or moving away from the boss who tries to track you in to stun you. Pay attention to the mechanics and the announcements on your screen and you'll do fine. The other four zones each have an objective which, if you achieve it, clears the zone and awards you with additional corrupted mementos. Two zones are considered medium zones, draining 7 sanity per second, and two are considered hard, draining 9 sanity per second. Clearing a hard zone will award 300 corrupted mementos in a chest at the end of the vision. Clearing a medium zone will award 150 corrupted mementos. Additionally, each zone difficulty has a corruption affix that will affect your gameplay. These affixes change periodically, so always look at the map to see what affix is active in each zone and plan how you'll play around them. Use your map in Raytheon's antechamber to help you plan what zones you intend to clear, what objectives you need to achieve, 
and what corruption affixes are present in each zone. There are two basic type of objectives in the horrific vision zones. Kill stuff, or click on things. I'm going to go over several of the zones in each vision to give you an idea of what to do, as well as any pitfalls to watch out for. The Valley of Wisdom in Orgrimmar is one of the most straightforward kill stuff zones. When you enter the zone, you get a quest notification just to kill everything. Pull everything and however large of packs you feel safe killing and mow it all down. At the end, a big bad will spawn and you have to kill it to finish the zone. In this run, the affix was split personality. Periodically, a circle of images spawned around me with only one gap. If you run into an image instead of through the gap, you get CC'd for several seconds. And several of the mobs have additional abilities that can stun you, injure you, or even drain your sanity. Watch out, and be sure to plan your pulls to have enough sanity to get through them, because you can't use a sanity orb in combat. And finally, be careful on the final big bad mob, as he has several dangerous mechanics to watch out for. The Valley of Spirits in Orgrimmar is a great example of a click thing zone. You have to click on totems, and then defeat a big bad that spawns at the end. Pull as much as you can around the totems, mow it down, and then go back and click all of them. In this zone, the affix this time was Dark Delusions. Every now and then an image spawns and chases you. Don't let it reach you. And again, several mobs have important abilities to pay attention to, especially the big bad mob at the end. In Stormwind, the Old Town objective requires that you find and kill Shaw. Follow the yellow dots to kill first a guy with a key, and then another guy with a key, and then unlock some gates that give you access to Shaw. He's a rogue, and he's hiding from you in stealth, but just go through the gates and you'll find him. The affix in this area during this run was Leaden Foot. Very often, you get debuffed with a movement speed reduction that stacks up as you move and drops stacks when you hold still. This forces you to periodically stop moving or suffer extreme movement penalties, which can be horribly problematic when you're trying to dodge mechanics. The Trade District requires you to kill some big bad mobs and then open cages to free some prisoners. Be very careful when pulling these named objective mobs as they can have extremely dangerous abilities that you cannot ignore. As you can see here, I pulled the Inquisitor and tried to group it with other mobs, and it was an enormous mistake, as it cast Convert on me while I was dealing with a large pack, making me incapable of healing for 30 seconds and putting a quick end to this run. But when dealt with immediately and straightforwardly, this mob is not particularly threatening. Just kill it straight away, and the debuff will fall off you with his death. This run, the affix in this zone, was Entomophobia, a particularly fun affix. Little red bugs jump on you, and you can actually see them crawling on you at the edges of your screen. If you don't jump to dislodge the bugs, then you accrue five of them at once, your character will run in a panic to get rid of them, and you can't stop moving. Although fortunately, you can still steer. Watch that you don't get forced to continue run when you had planned to put up an orb to replenish your sanity, or you'll get thrown out of the instance with a sanity orb still left. The Dwarven District has Stormwind's Click Things versions. You have to plant 8 bombs, so pull everything you can to clear out the area, and then run around clicking your bombs. Once you've planted all your bombs and detonated them, a big bad will spawn for you to kill, to gain completion credit for this zone. Throughout all of these zones, it's important to learn and pay attention to the mob abilities, particularly dangerous debuffs that may stun you, drain your sanity, or increase your risk of death. Additionally, you need to pay attention to the corruption affixes, which can interact with the mob mechanics to dramatically increase the danger of attempting large pulls or dangerous mobs. Now, returning to the theme of this video, the most important takeaway, getting your cloak upgrades. In your first five completions of Horrific Visions, until your cloak reaches level five, your goal is to defeat the Disciple of Nazoth. When you kill the Disciple, the vision is over. You're ported out even if you had additional orbs or sanity that you could have used to stay in longer. So if you're trying to maximize your Corrupted Mementos acquisition, kill the Disciple last. But remember, Save enough sanity to ensure you kill Ilaria or Thrall, so you don't lose out on a cloak upgrade. Once your cloak is level 5, check in with Raytheon. He'll have a new quest for you in the Chamber of the Heart. To obtain additional upgrades, you no longer need to clear the first easy zone by killing Ilaria or Thrall. Instead, you're required to clear a medium zone to obtain your level 6 and higher upgrades. And eventually, when your cloak is high enough, you'll be required to clear a hard zone. Make sure you always check with Raytheon before you enter a horrific vision. He always has a quest to turn in the upgrade items even if you don't have one with you, so it's easy to ignore his exclamation mark and ignore him offering a new quest at level 5. But if you don't pick up the new quest, you won't be able to loot the new upgrade item you need for your level 6 upgrade from clearing a medium difficulty area. Always keep in mind which objective you're required to complete to obtain your cloak upgrade. 
The biggest mistake you can make in 8.3 is failing to obtain your cloak upgrade from each and every vision you do, as messing up in even one can put you permanently behind. I know this was a long video, folks. I'm actually quite excited about Horrific Visions, as they introduce a new kind of varying, changing content that we'll progress through. At the very worst, they've got to be better than Islands. Let us know in the comments below if this was helpful, and what do you think of this new content? As always, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and sub so you don't miss future ones.